Hi folks, Chris Mask from Eastlink Community TV's Off the Chip Wagon. Food sport competitor, I've been on TV a couple times, MasterChef Canada, Wall of Chefs, did a lot better on that one. I compete with Broken Antler Barbecue, both in the United States and here in Canada. I've been to the World Food Championships a couple of times. Basically, I'm a foodie, I like talking food. So when the Greater Sudbury Public Library Services asked me to do some cooking videos for you, I was like, yeah, absolutely, love talking shop. And today in the shop, we are going to talk about burgers, hamburgers. People do them differently. Is there a right way and a wrong way to cook them? Well, technically it comes down to some technique, but also it comes down to your own personal preference. And you can see that when you look at the commercial franchises out there, like the Clown, the Redhead, or even the King, and then the independent people out there. There's a lot of chip stands out there that I've been to that really do know how to cook a good hamburger. But it also comes down, like I said, to your own personal taste. Where did hamburgers come from? If you take a look back, fourth century, Roman times, they printed something called the Apicius Cookbook. And in it, there's a recipe for something which kind of resembles a hamburger in a way. Uh, Isikia omanatata, if I pronounced that right. Essentially, it was a, a baked meat patty that had pine nuts and peppercorns in it. But the hamburger, people say that, well, comes from Hamburg, Germany, when the 19th century sailors did trading with the Baltic provinces in Russia, and they came back with beef tartar. You know, bits of meat that have been diced up. Now, tartare were served raw, but people have heard of it. I mean, even Jules Verne and Michael Strogoff, his 1887 novel mentions it. And the English, in medieval times, they were doing mincemeat, right? But the actual hamburger from Hamburg, Germany, was when they took this tartare, realized they didn't like eating it raw, so they decided to fry up these patties made of this cut-up beef scrap. But hamburgers... North America. Now we're going into state fairs. And I mean, there's a lot of history here because everybody wants to stake claim to this thing anywhere between 1885 to 1904. And if you go according to the Library of Congress in the States, then Lewis Leeson, he's the one that technically invented the hamburger when at a state fair, he sandwiched a meatball between two slices of bread. Family still serves it up that way at their generational restaurant, which is still operating. If you ever get to uh, New Haven, Connecticut, you might want to look that up. But then you can take a look at uh, Canton, Ohio. They say that they stake a claim to it. Uh, the Erie County Fair outside of Buffalo. That's where they ran out of hot dogs and sausages one day. But the vendors still wanted to keep selling. Butchers didn't want to make more sausages and hot dogs. So they ground up some meat which was beef, formed it into a more of a sausage really looking thing than it was a hamburger patty, but they put it between some bread and boom, that technically is a hamburger. Whatever you want to believe, whatever you want to follow, at the end of the day, this is something which, like I said, is very near and dear to a lot of people. So in today's video, we're going to talk about a couple different ways to make hamburgers. And we're also going to do a meatless option as well, because I've got a great vegan recipe. And I'm telling you, you're not going to miss the beef in this one. This has been one of my go-to recipes whenever I have to make a, a vegan patty for somebody for years and years and years. Really simple, really easy to make. So let's start with uh, some essentials and some basics when it comes to hamburgers. Meat quality. Don't cheap out on the meat. You need to have a good fat to meat content here. So sometimes I'll actually go and grind bacon up and put that into my hamburger meat. If you're using really fatty meat, that's where you're gonna get a whole lot of flare ups and a lot of grease in the pan. But again, you also can't go too lean because fat equals flavor. One of the big pitfalls when it comes to making burgers is people tend to overwork the meat. They like putting things like breadcrumbs as a binder and some egg and, you know, packets of onion soup mix, which, hey, if that works for you, sure, fine. But now when you add all those things into it, you got to work the meat. And when you overwork the meat, it's less hamburger, more meatball. So you really got to be gentle with how you treat your meat when it comes to making hamburgers. So a good quality, good cut, if you're using, you know, brisket trimmings, if you're using your own chuck that you're grinding yourself, it really does go a long way 
for an excellent burger patty. And you'll see the difference. I mean, even if you compare it to those franchise ones, which you can find out there if you're going to go through a drive through somewhere. So meat patties, however you form them, however you, you make them, fresh is best. You can prep them the day before, absolutely. But the reason why you want to try and get a nice, even, uniform patty here is because when you cook it, we want the Maillard effect. So remember, that's the proteins, the caramelization, the amino acids, blah, 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 blah. It's a lot of sciencey stuff there. But that is a really nice hamburger that came from a pan. I haven't even gone into the barbecue stuff yet. We'll save barbecue for another day. However, getting that crust on the outside is key because you don't want to overcook the inside. We want to keep that somewhere around medium so you get all those juices locked in there and you get that texture when you get that first bite. And that's why smash burgers, a lot of people like those because you get those crispy edges on the side. And that's one thing that we're going to make today is a smash burger. However, these two patties that I have here are going to be made into something completely different. And this one, we're coming from left field with that. So to start with, when we make these burger patties here, what you need to do is get yourself a whole lot of American cheese, processed cheese. Because what we're going to do is we are going to build a little house around these patties with this cheese. And when I say a little house, by the time this is done, we're going to basically now take this whole thing, and I don't even mean basically, we're just going right out there. We're going to take this whole thing, we are going to dip it in a batter like you would a pogo. We're going to roll it in frozen french fries, and then we're going to deep fry it. It's going to be a cheesy, crunchy, crispy, everything you possibly want in Franken food goodness. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. <laughs> Oh boy. So I'll show you the process of building our little uh, tent for these burgers in a bit. When I talk about the vegan burgers, now here is where a lot of people say, well, I don't like eating vegetarian and vegan because of the texture and the taste, blah, 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 blah. Use the right ingredients. For starters, honestly, one of the best vegan burgers that I have out there starts with beets. Fresh beets, canned beets, doesn't matter. Get yourself some beets. Now the thing is with the beets, don't puree them puree them, you're going to be off texturally. So what you want to do is you want to actually dice them up or put them through a grater. You need to get that texture so it almost even resembles coarse ground beef. Now something that's going to boost it and help as a binder, black beans. Use white beans, use lentils, whatever you want. But the beans, when you process all this, you're going to beef up the burger a little bit more. No pun intended there with that. But it's also going to help act as a binder. When you're looking at binders, if uh, you don't want to go the bean route, you could use tomato paste as well. And something that's a little bit out there, but I'm telling you, it gives a really nice nuttiness to it, is peanut butter. And peanut butter in a vegan burger is really not that far off because this recipe that I use for these beet burgers has walnuts in them. Yeah, I'll do that instead. I used up most of mine already, so that's all I got left. So anyway, there you go. How do you flavor it? This is where it gets interesting. Number one, barbecue spice. So this right here, this is our broken antler barbecue. This is actually our chicken spice that we're using here, but that's what I put into my beet burgers. And the other thing I did, which also helps in the binding process, instead of using breadcrumbs, potato chips. Use whatever flavor chips you want. Because those, when you grind them up, that's gonna help bind everything together and help form your patties. And when I say form your patties, this is what you're looking at. And if you take a really good look, you can actually see those cut up chunks of beets that are in there. And that is what gives us our texture. You're gonna to wanna to let this sit up probably for about 20 minutes in a freezer before you put it on any kind of grill or whatever. But if you get these patties right texturally, they're gonna hold up just like any ground beef would on a grill or in a frying pan. And you're gonna get a really rewarding burger out of this. I mean, honestly, use some barbecue chips or some bacon chips in there and it tastes like a hamburger, it really does. It's not that far off. So, smash burgers. Never press your patty down, except if you're making a smash burger. And to make a smash burger right, we're looking at super thin patties. And then you wanna get some onions and just smash that all into a nice hot cast iron pan if you have that ability 
Uh, smash burger is a little more difficult unless you have a griddle feature on your barbecue to make on the barbecue. But either way, I mean, these are incredibly rewarding. So we'll head over on into the kitchen and we'll start playing around in there for you. This is the out there burger. So this is Franken food at its best because this is your burgers and fries all in one meal, not for the calorie conscious and uh, not for the barbecue either because what we're going to do is we're going to deep fry this. So using your American cheese, we start with our layer. In the middle here, I mean, if you want to put something like uh, funky blue cheese, you want to put like an onion, bacon jam, whatever you want, go ahead. Otherwise, uh, you know what? More cheese. Then one more patty on top. So you can see we're already into the double patty standard here. So what we need, again, is to create this tent all around the burger. So you're going to go through a lot of cheese. So yeah, this is going to be a cheesy, gooey mess by the time you're all said and done. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dip this bad boy into some cornmeal batter. And we... Gonna roll in some french fries and then let it set up in the actual freezer. So we're gonna put one more in the back here. I miscounted my cheese slices, so my bad. Uh, but essentially this, we're gonna shape that all around there and then it's gonna be ready to get dipped. We've got our cornmeal batter here. It's uh, basically cornmeal, some all-purpose flour. You can use beer in this as well. I like buttermilk. But uh, the one thing I don't like to do is add excessive sugar because the sugar is what's going to burn in your oil and give it that dark, not appealing look. So a lot of times when you go to chip stands and uh, you see these dark looking, you know, corn dogs slash pogos, uh, it's just the sugar content. It's not that they overcooked it. So just keep that in mind. Um, the other thing that we have here are uh, our fries. So we just dice up any kind of crinkle cut fries that you want to buy from the frozen food section of the grocery store so here's our patty all encased in cheese and now we're gonna dip 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 and get in there get messy that's what it's all about kids will like doing this stuff too so this is obviously something you're going to want to make in advance of any kind of party just because it's a little time consuming your uh, corn dog batter should stick quite nicely to it like that, and then let's throw it in with our fries. So again, messy, time consuming, but by the time this is said and done, if this works, you're gonna have a nice corn dog, cheese, crusted burger. So I gotta give this another little dip because there's some sections here that are, are showing, but you get the point. Once you get this all set up, what you're gonna do is we go back into our corn dog and oh, oh, cheese slice, told you I miscounted by one. Uh, once we get this all coated up there, we're gonna basically put this on a wire rack like this and that'll go and set officially, if you will, in a freezer until we're ready to deep fry that in some oil. All right, so here we are, we're at the stove. Now, when it comes to choosing your pan, if don't, if if the non-stick stuff is all you have, that's what you're going to use, right? This is one of those stone pans. I actually like using this along with cast iron because it gets a really nice sear on things like steaks. And of course, when you're cooking like, you know, vegetarian burgers with the meatless craze, a lot of people are hung up on texture. And whether you want to do the, you know, the bean route, the uh, processed ones that are, you know, I can't believe it's not meat. Just use fresh ingredients if you're making it at home yourself. And because beets are naturally high in sugar as it is, you gotta be careful about burning. So temperature control, incredibly important. If you use the right binder, you can put this right on your barbecue grill, just like you would a normal ground beef patty or pork patty, because it's gonna stand up. When we cook this, we wanna get a nice crust, flip, and get a crust on that second side. A Little bit of avocado oil is in the pan here, just because we wanna crisp up the edges. So I think we're about ready to cook. Temperature feels about right. Oh, well, my hand's not in the pan. It's just, you get used to feeling heat. So here we go. And again, remember, we don't want to puree it. We want to try and dice it up so you can still see how there's chunks of actual beet in there and you can see a little bit of the walnut as well. Here we go. Nice sizzle right off the hop. 
it's a labor of love when it comes to cooking anything. So when I talk about a labor of love, you just got to be patient with it. Also get your, make sure you don't put your face too close to this pan either. <laughs> All right, so we got this going. Let's take a look at smash burgers because I mean, it's really self-explanatory. We want to get that crispy crust on the edges there and flip. If your binder is not right, here's your warning. This thing's going to fall apart. So binding is important when it comes to making these vegetarian patties. So you can see we've done our flip. We've got that nice caramelization on the outside where it's not burnt. Perfect. If you want a more dense patty, consider using things like uh, maybe some rolled oats or oatmeal in the mix. You can also use just rice, long grain, wild rice, brown rice, white rice, whatever rice you have handy. It will give you a, a more firm patty, but uh, I think that honestly, if you balance everything right with this recipe, this is a, a good enough texture and density for anybody to be happy when they take that first bite. You can also jazz it up a little bit as well if you want to go that extra mile and do something like making uh, eggplant bacon really thin strips of uh, eggplant, throw them through the dehydrator with a little bit of liquid smoke and the right spices and uh, yeah, kind of tastes just like bacon on it. So if you want to go the vegetarian meatless Monday route, right? Smash burgers. Number one, right pan. Cast iron, griddle, perfect, barbecue, don't work so well. You can probably see the smoke that's coming off of this right now. There's no oil in this pan, nothing. This is just heat. So we start with onions. Take your onions. Throw them in there. You can hear the sizzle. Don't want them to burn. Just move them around. They pop out of the pan like that. Just plunk, plunk them back in. Remember, no burning. We just want a little bit of color softening. And the smell coming off of this. I mean, if you love onions, this is perfect. So the real smash burgers have the onions beaten right into the burger. We're looking at thin, thin patties. So that's where you're going to make the right meat selection again. Our onions are starting to become a little translucent, taking on a little, little, little bit of caramelization with this too. You can blast it with a bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. And again, that's how hot the pan is. You can see how it steams when I put that in there. So when we're ready, just kind of get them as close to the middle of the pan as you can. And now we add the smash burger. And by smash burger, it's a ball of very loose meat. Don't worry about the seasoning. You can season it after, and we've already seasoned the onions. So you can hear the sizzle on that. Here comes the smash. So we want to make sure this patty is thin, 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 because we want to get those edges and get those onions beaten right into it as well. Using a flatter spatula without these little holes in it makes this process a lot easier, but hey, I've got to show you that I'm human too, right? So again, thin, 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 because we want to get it crispy, crispy on the edges. We've had this going for a little while. You can see how the edges are starting to take on a little bit of color. I think we're about ready for a flip. So we're just flipping once here. We shouldn't have to flip multiple times with a smash burger. Just like that, and there you go. So we're getting these crispy edges here, and that's what we want. And those onions are right into the patty. At this point here, when you do the flip, this is where you can add some seasoning if you want. A little bit of seasoning salt. The pepper. But there's no need to overwork a burger. So when you see these people making burgers that aren't smash burgers, where they're taking their spatula and they're just hammering down on that, you're pushing all those juices out, they're going to dry up your burger. Don't overwork the meat. Just let it do its thing. And again, because these are thin patties, they really don't take a whole lot of time. This is the point here where you could throw on a piece of processed cheese if you really want. It's entirely up to you. Hey, it's your burger, your life. Leave it on the edge. Shine on, you crazy diamond. So... Now we've got our monster. If you have a deep fryer grate, otherwise, pot with some oil in it, that's all you need. Remember, we let this bad boy set up in the freezer 
So this way everything's going to stick a little bit more. And it seems a little big for the pot. It probably is, but I ran out of oil, so not much I can do. There we go. So it's like frying french fries. About 325, that's where you want this. You don't want this to go too dark. So because I've got shallow oil here, I'm going to have to make sure that I'm constantly watching it, flipping it, and working it until we get to that golden brown that I want. But once it hits that golden brown, I know the batter's cooked. We already know the patties inside are cooked. That cheese is going to be melted. This is going to be a wonderful Franken food burger. All right, so smash burgers fried, beet burger fried, and then the other monstrosity, well, that's deep fried. And you'll see how they all showed up. Remember, cooking technique, really important. Don't smash down on your patty. You're just going to get rid of all that juice. With the beet burger, you want to make sure that the beets have been shredded. So you got that texture in there. And then that little bit of char on there is going to give it that smoky taste. Uh, same thing with using like bacon chips or barbecue chips. And it's all about the seasoning really in this. The nuts add that extra little bit of meatiness to it. And at the end of the day, throw a nice little vegan roumelade on there. And you can do that with veganese. Really not that hard to make. I'll include the recipe for that. But really, this is, oh, this is a fantastic burger. Now, mm. it just goes so perfectly. Like, honestly, Meatless Monday is really easy to do if you're putting up dishes like this. Smash burger. We're using a really super extra large bun on this. Don't need to do that. But again, crispy edges, our onions are smashed right in there. Keep it simple. Hot peppers, lettuce, a little bit of mustard. And at the end of the day, oh. Everybody is having Let's go watch me chew for a minute. Finally, the monstrosity that we made. Because it's cool, it's not going to be so cheesy and gooey, but there. Hey, look at that bad boy. This, this is what we wrapped in cheese, coated in corn dog batter, then rolled it around in little french fries, as you can see, the chopped up fries, then deep fried it. Frankenstein food. Franken food, whatever you want to call it. But boy, that's going to impress your guests right there. Serve it with a good dip. Anytime you're making your burgers, you want about a 160 internal temperature. Don't go over too much. You don't want to dry it out. And remember, do not overwork the meat. When you do that, you're going to take a hamburger and you're going to turn it into a meatball. Do what you want. Salt, pepper, really basic seasoning for burgers. If it's a good quality beef, if you get it from a local farm, I mean, that's going to speak for itself. Always try to get your farm fresh beef because it really is a difference maker when you're trying to impress people with burgers. But at the end of the day, burgers mean different things to different people. So if you want to put your own spice blend in there, go for it. You want to throw a pack of French onion soup mix in it? Hey, who's to stop you? You want to do the whole vegetarian meatless thing. As we saw with our beet burger, really, you don't miss the meat for it. Find something that's near and dear to your heart. Put your own personal spin on it. And people will appreciate it, whether they're coming for dinner or for a backyard barbecue. A little bit of effort really does go a long way. Thanks for watching once again. If there's anything you want to see me talk about in the future, by all means, fire me off a message through social media, whether it's Instagram or Facebook, or contact the library. They'll get in touch with me. They know how to find me. They've got like a bat signal. Except for me, it's the fat signal. Still gets my attention. You folks, have a good day. Take care. Okay, here's a little quick side note there. Just look at the texture on the inside of this beet burger. It's fantastic. You're not going to miss meat with this one. Trust me.